another episode, another dollar. Wow, we're getting paid we, one dollar an episode. We get paid zero dollars for the record. We make literally yeah, actually, no money. For the record, literally no money. We've <laughs> only okay. lost money so far, but you know what? It's fun. All we it's care about matters. is creating good content, boys. Hell That's yeah! All we care about. I'm in it for the content, for the baby. Content, baby. <laughs> just here for the content. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. This is Over Inspected, the greatest cubing podcast in the universe, and we're just gonna dive right into it. Is cubing a sport? Uh, is that's it? the question of oh, the day. Man. Yes, no, maybe? Maybe so. I don't and know. Hmm. This is definitely an age old question. Like, I remember people were discussing this, like, when I started cubing, which is easily a decade ago. Oh, really? Um, you, think, you think it's that old? Because I feel like when, when I first started cubing, like, I feel like everyone viewed it as a hobby. Also, shout out, by the way, to my WCA profile. It is now 10 years old as of like three days ago, which is insane. Oh, nice. Yeah, which, I was, remember you, which is crazy. Like, yeah, last week you said it was like, it was coming up like two or three days yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 and, and it happened. So that was crazy. Anyway, but yeah, I feel like back then everyone saw it as a hobby, even like, even like the world's bests were all just like, oh yeah, this is just a fun thing I do. Oh yeah, I, I guess you're right. I, I think, right? 2013, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Like I think it it is true that you know, way more people nowadays see it as something worth like devoting all your waking hours to, like Timon. Um, I remember, let's say 2013. So that's sort of like around when Felix was like way ahead of everyone else. Yep. Yep. I, I feel think... like in, in 2013. I think Felix was at that point of like pure domination. And I think it was just such a dominating thing that, you know, people, I think there was like a lack, I don't know if this is true. Just, uh, you know how sports, part of the thing that makes a sport a sport is the competitive aspect. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, true. truthfully, true. back in the day, it, it wasn't super like competitive. Um, if, if you have to think, if you think about like all the like, Let's say athletes, right? Let's say gather all the athletes in the world, doesn't matter what sport, it could be the most edge case sport in the world, like even more edge case than, than the Rubik's Cube. You could make an argument that Felix might have one of the greatest careers of all time. Oh yeah, if totally, you were to, totally. If you were to just compare a career, not compare so, impact in the world or compare earnings, stuff like that, but one of the greatest careers of all time, right? So one of the most comparable hobbies, I think, to speed cubing is speed running, right? And if you if you take speed cubing and speed running to be somewhat similar, then it is very it is relatively rare for there to be a game that's played by so many people that's so well known that one person has kind of dominated for like an, a very long stretch of time, even while like the scene was still active. And there were still like people who were actively playing. Sometimes that happens when like the game is like kind of dead and there's really only like one player who's like on oh top. yeah but cubing is has, like cubing is like sort of had it it's, it's had its up and down right but everyone knows what the rubik's cube is and like and like millions and millions of people know how to solve a rubik's cube but even that and there are people who are going to competitions but even then there's well, just one person who's just at the top for like an extended period of time yeah i guess when i think of speed running there's a whole bunch of different games that can be speed ran. So like, even if you dominate at one game, it doesn't feel like the same as like Felix dominating kind of in like half of all events, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like with speed runners, like typically someone's only good at like one or two games that they specialize in. Oh, so here, here's an analogy, right? Maybe, maybe this is un unrealistic, but so Mario, let's take Mario 64. So there are a bunch of different categories in Mario 64, depending on the number of stars you collect uh, before you like complete the game. So you can do 100%, which is 120 stars. You can do the like the minimum you would need to do without any major glitches, 70 star. Then there's 16 star, one star, and zero star. And I don't think there's ever been a point in Mario 64 history where one person has held the world record in all of the categories. And so I guess like what Felix did would be like something akin to like having the world record in most of those, most of those categories, if not all of them. Right, yeah. right. Well, see, I think that is all true, but also um, I think everyone is on the same page that Felix had like insane domination in the like mid 2010s. But I guess, you know, what we want to talk about is maybe we, we want to think about what 
we consider the definition of a sport because then that will answer like whether or not cubing falls in that. And the first thing that I'm thinking about is like how chess is officially right. considered a sport, and that's also a very controversial move. Um, because like to made, me, was it actually like made official? And I, I don't know when was this uh, when this happened. Oh, I, I guess I, I just sort of have this like vague memory that it was, but I don't want to like say things unsighted, right? So maybe, maybe yeah, so uh, it maybe wasn't. Maybe fact check. That's yeah, interesting. Okay, while you guys are fact checking, maybe let's take a step back. So let, let's start with like easy questions. Like, do you think like football is a sport? Yes. Although, which one? But, but the answer to both is yes. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, do you think like basketball is a sport? Yes. I, I think, I think unequivocally goes yes. All yeah. Right, now I guess like the weird ones, right? Do you think golf is a sport yes. yes yes i think that one like you know you're gonna get 99 percent people saying yes so do you think bowling is a sport yeah y yes yeah yeah, yeah. I so, think so i i still think yeah most people still think that like bowling and stuff is a sport but i think once you start to move towards golf and bowling it becomes more of like a gray area it's like okay like what do, what do we really mean by a sport okay so then then there's like there's chess which is one thing but then there's also esports which are also sports, but like not quite in like the same, not quite in the same vein, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, well, I, I was, I was thinking about this. Um, there's there's a lot of comparisons to be made here, and then you know it's really nice to set definitions for what is a sport, but um, I'm sure there's an actual definition of like the. Isn't there a sports federation that you know there that does recognize? um certain activities as sports um there's probably like a concrete definition for sure um i mean that i'm not yeah. super aware of but there are some parallels um of cubing and some like other edge cases i think the for me and then we can kind of break it down after that and kind of share our opinions but for me there's three main components there is skill mm -hmm. there Definitely. is opposition and then there is physical activity, right? So those are the three main things. And the reason why I say those are the three main things is because we can take edge case categorizations of sports and they fall in one of the three. For example, esports, you would say that the physical activity is very minimal, but the skill and the finesse, mm -hmm. um, the mental capacity that it's required to take, and this is the big one, this is why it's called an esport, is because you have an opponent. If you think about all the 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 big esport games, I think right now a big one's Valorant, right? Yeah. You're always against your. It's a team based game where you're against another team, and you're actually supposed to use your skill against their skill, and that's like competition, um, and that's like a big edge case of what a sport is, right? Same thing right. with chess. It's, I mean, physical activity, no, but it's opposition. It's mm -hmm. skill, right? Yeah. And cubing is like with physical activity. Actually, you could say cubing is arguably on the same track, no pun intended, as track. Really? We, we don't uh, have any opposition. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We don't have any opposition except ourselves. Yeah. Or like yeah. golf, actually. Or, I, yeah, golf and bowling, I think also. Well, bowling maybe is a little bit different, but... I was gonna say that like I think cubing has always felt like a more solitary thing. Like everyone always says I come to the competitions to beat my own PRs. Um and like I still think there is definitely a space within cubing to make it more competitive. I mean that's a discussion for another time, but like, you know. There must be a way to make it like a 1v1 cubing match. Like maybe like Max Park versus that dream team, that video of the two by two three seven seven relay. That could be seen as more of a sport with an opposition. But yeah, like like you said, golf is another example of like a, a sport that most people consider a sport where you don't really have an opponent that is like holding you back. It's just got to beat them in a leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's so, not it's not like a um, it's not a zero sum game in some sense, right? It's not like when if I do better, then you are strictly going to do worse. It's like more like if I do better, yeah. then you also have a chance to do to do better. It just, just kind of depends on how it plays out. Whoever does be whoever it, does the best wins, as opposed to. Whoever is just whoever is the better in like the one on one matchup kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I guess it's like, it, it is, if the only thing you care about is like getting that gold medal or like the trophy for getting first place, then I guess it still is zero sum. Because, you know, you yeah, could like I beat guess. your PR in terms of like the number of strokes it took to get in all the holes. But if you got beaten by someone else, you get silver medal and then that counts as losing. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I guess, I guess it is. It can be zero sum in that, in that sense. I guess it's more what I meant, more like... It's not like when, if one person, it, it, like, both players can play, like, exceptionally well, and they can both, like, the, the score at the end is going to reflect that, I guess. As opposed to where, as, as opposed to where if it's more like, more like basketball or something, where, like, there's a winner mm -hmm. and a loser. I, I guess in golf, there's, there are also winners and losers, but it's not quite the same. It's not, oh, you're, yeah, not, you're think... not like directly competing against them, right? Someone could yeah, be, yeah, like I... you could be playing in the final group and someone could be playing like three or four groups before you and you're still competing with them too. You're competing against everyone at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree that like, they're, like we're all on the same page that with basketball, it's definitely more like a face-to-face -face, like us versus them. And like our strategy is going to change depending on like how the other team plays. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you don't get with... I, I'm guessing you don't get that with golf. Like, in golf, it's just like, whatever strategy works for you, you're going to stick with. And yeah. the same is true for cubing. I mean, I think there is some chance in golf for that you'll go for something riskier if, like, you know that you, there's, like, a score to beat. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, Makes I guess there is a little bit of that, but it's it still lacks, like, the direct head-to-headness. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Do you guys... So, like, and this is sort of, like we can like just kind of make up our minds and then kind of delve into it a little bit firstly it's like a two-part question do you guys think that the the defi definition that i proposed of a sport is like pretty valid like it must contain some variety of those three components and anything more is probably extracurricular like is those the three criteria for a sport so you said it was like a physical activity um skill skill and then mm -hmm. uh the sort of competition element yeah opposition opposition right opposition. i think so like yeah, i think that, that you have to keep the physical element in right. there yeah because yeah. otherwise given that well given that those elements are fundamental like however much or less it's involved in the in whatever spot we're talking about like um whoever wants to like go first do you guys think given that at the moment as is, is cubing a sport to you guys. Hmm, okay. So, As is. So, he, so my take is, so I think cubing lacks, it lacks in the physical components compared to other sports. So even, even if you compare it to golf and bowling, there's much less of a physical aspect. Albeit, I think there's more of a physical aspect in cubing than there is in something like chess. Um, because uh, as you could, as we saw with the recent three one three world record, even though Max had a really efficient solution, three one three was not possible unless he had ten TPS, and ten TPS is not is not trivial, right? Like it requires loads <laughs> yeah. loads of practice. It requires a lot of dexterity. Here's another analogy that you could draw. If you think darts is a sport, I think the physicality required at darts is probably about the same as it is in cubing. I could. That's I could, true. Yeah. I could see it probably being about the same. And I think darts. Darts could be a sport. I, I could. I could definitely see that. The place so that I think. You... I think cubing no, is lacking, ahead. is yeah. this is like this opposition. This what this head to headness is not quite there, and that is like something that we. Th that that's a lot harder to fix. It, it requires like the, the structure of the competitions to change. Maybe it requires like what we consider to be like like advancing or doing well in a competition that all of that needs to kind of change um in order to have right. a more of like a competitive aspect to it mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's also an argument that maybe we don't want cubing to become more like a sport like yeah. maybe the beauty oh. maybe because like, i know a lot of cubers are like introverted so maybe people get into the hobby because they like the fact that they can come to a competition and like not have to stare another person in the well i mean not that yeah, like no, no, staring at people it, yeah. in the face is bad but it's like like they're kind of like in their own zone in their own lane yeah yeah and i got you i think some people like that um i definitely think that you know if we want this to become like a spectator sport like i i think some sort of like 1v1 i don't know 
rivalry would be really good to help kind of make it feel more like a story is being told. Mm. But we're not really... That's actually a good point, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're worrying about, like, the spectators quite yet. Yeah, yeah, I think it's interesting. Like, I feel like the... So, I feel like the co the way that the conversation is going for people who think that cubing should be a sport and want it to become a sport, I, it seems like people want to push that in more of, like, the esports direction rather than, like, something that's more more like bowling or darts or something like that. Or, or poker, even. I mean, that's an interesting question. Do you think poker is a sport? Uh, I don't poker is want poker it. showed up on ESPN and stuff, so I don't want well, to like hasn't... get the definition wrong of poker. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want any like diehard poker players to like. Yeah, sorry, we should know this. We, I, it's fine. I just uh, claim I us. claim idiocy. So is is poker a sport? I feel like poker. It... I feel like poker could. I feel like poker is considered a sport. Well, if like poker is a sport, then like actually, how does how how do po like poker TV channels make that spectator friendly? Because I feel like that's a game that's like very hard to. Well, I I, I guess I haven't watched it myself, but maybe like the yes. card reveal is what's visually interesting. Yeah, so I I've seen things where like so I've only briefly seen seen poker show up, but I feel like whenever poker is happening, they get, they have like the super dramatic shots of everyone sitting at the table. Then obviously because they're the broadcasters, they know what everyone has in it in everyone's hands, right? So they can yeah. they run some calculations and they're like, all right, you know, this person has this percent chance of winning or whatever. Um, you know, they, they show you some nice stats and stuff. P poker is a very probabilistic game, right? And it, I feel like it yeah. really appeals to people who like to think in, in probabilities. So I think they throw a lot of that stuff onto the screen and then they say, okay, well, in order for this person to win, they need this outcome or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, I think the general sentiment that it sounds like we're gathering between the three of us is I think all of us probably agree, and tell me if I'm wrong, and audience, if, you know, however you feel about this, all of us think that cubing as is is not a sport. Does that sound more or less on point? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a valid question though, Carrie. Like, I mean, do we want cubing to be a sport? Yeah. I'm sure that's a little bit of a controversial topic, but I don't really think it has to be like a sport. Like that doesn't have to be like the emphasis. See, here's oh, the thing. there's, sorry. So there's one other addition I want to add to sports. Um, oh yeah. So I think the three things we had are great. We also need uh, like codified rules and regulations, but cubing, cubing already follows this. So that- Yeah, I think that's it what cubing, cubing probably oh, has yeah. the like best because- yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can't have a sport without like dedicated rules and like, you know, there, there needs to be clear, you know, like reasonably clear um, guidelines as to what happens in certain scenarios. But that, that that's not a problem for keeping on this. So, I mean, that's a good point. Um, I did pull up a definition of, you know, sports, which is very interesting. And then yeah. <laughs> I think what's interesting about it is that it actually gave me a different definition. A sport by definition is an, act, at, an activity that requires skill in which a person or a team competes with another person or team. Oh, interesting. Like, so it drops the uh, the physicality. Yeah. Aspects. Well, but like this is the next definition. Mm -hmm. A game, by definition, means a competitive activity or sport which is undertaken for fun and is played as per set rules of the game. So it looks like there could be some differences between game and sport and they could be correlated. But I guess that was just like a, a food for thought thing. But here's the thing. I think um, in the theory... Like we can start theory crafting of like what would be a good way to make cubing more closer to a sport. And in my opinion, I actually think it starts off with some sort of official recognized WCA format of a competitive leaderboard. Yeah, um, I agree. If you guys are familiar with the Twisty Puzzle Cup, which we did on this channel a while ago, having a leaderboard is a really, really easy way to create competition, but it's still competing against yourself but you get to compete against yourself against others in a way other than prs so like if in theory like for example the fedex cup in golf yeah that's kind exactly. of how we model the exactly. twisty puzzle yep. cup you can use that as a way to create opposition without having a cuber go head to head against another cuber and i think as is if that leaderboard aspect showed up in the wca format it would definitely be considered a sport, like bar none. 
Yeah, I get to, to expand on that basically. So what we mean by this leaderboard format is basically every time you compete at, you, you go to a, a competition, you get a certain amount of points depending on how well you did. And you know, that, that depends on, you know, how big the competition was, um, how well you did relative to everyone else, basically. And you know, things like that. There, there are also, there, I think the good way to describe this is, is FedEx Cup ranking points, because I think that that does a really good job. Um, so yeah, you get more points. And then after, whenever the season ends, um, you just have like some playoff between like the top, like 20 people or whatever. And then that it's like the, it's like a world cup in some sense, right? Uh, you have the whole, you have the whole season to qualify and then whoever makes the qualifiers, you know, is on the bubble every week you can do like a bubble watch, right? Um, and see like who's in, who's out and whoever ends up the top at the end of the year, two year period, um, they get crowned the champion. Yeah. And it could, it could definitely create like a lot of uh differentialities in how the wca is run so for example if it's like a direct correlation to the fedex cup rankings imagine if continental championships were worth more points exactly they totally should in be. your fedex cup rankings. they, they totally should so be. like if, if i were max park well should i like grind out like every single local competition that there is or should i just do four a year and get my way up the fedex cup rankings for example right right yeah, i think I think that is interesting because like a lot of competitors will just like go to as many local comps as possible because what they care about is like world records or like national records which you know will count no matter the scale of the competition right. yep but right, this right. like a uh, tiered system that you have where like some championships are like worth more i guess it helps create like a structure of the sport like there there are like events to care more about and then there's like smaller side events or not events but like like you know uh, like, like a spectacle things that are happening, like a, a right. event as in like, you, you know what I mean? Right. Yep. And imagine yep. if it was like the ranking system was like one way as an invitational to the world championship or exactly. a special, a special event or like, you know, something of that nature. WCA don't, you know, don't yell at me. I'm just like thinking of creative ideas that, you know, I would love to share and I would love to like hear how people interpret this. Right. Um, there's a lot of storylines to be had. This fixes a huge problem with regional championships in the United States because regional championships, truth be told, people don't care about them a lot. Yeah. Like they care about them, but they don't care. Like all them. you get for winning the regional championship is like a little, a little title. And you know, yeah. the title, the title is fun, right? It's cool the to be like the Western <laughs> champion or like the Northeastern champion, but, but it does not carry the Western like champion, that much weight. What if being the Western championship meant more? And exactly. this is just one way to do it, right? So the, the leaderboard thing is a really simple way to make it feel like a sport because it kind of connects you with the rest of the world in a way. Mm -hmm. Well, like yeah. the rest of the people that, that qualify. Also, now, to be clear, how, not to be yeah. clear, this this system does also have cons, of course. Like we we are only highlighting the good points, but it, it's just yeah. an idea. It's just you know an idea out there. Another like good thing that might be a takeaway from it is it creates storylines, right? And like then, of like, the contestants. Not yeah, it creates storylines. Like we already have storylines that are very entertaining, right? Like the storylines of of uh, Felix and Matt's Volk, right? Um, the storyline of Felix versus Max Park. Um, but it's not like a versus, it's like a friendly rivalry type thing. But like, mm -hmm. obviously Netflix did a whole documentary about it, about how important it was to cubing, right? Yeah. But you could create storylines beyond that, right? Like it just creates in a way entertainment, right? That maybe would draw more interest and to be having considered this sport. Part of what makes the NBA so interesting is that they have so many storylines. Yeah, that's true, you yeah. Could, you could watch a blowout NBA game and it's not competitive at all, but the casters have just so much to talk about. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> I mean, still stuff to right. take out of it, yeah. 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 So are you thinking that like, if you have these more like official, officially mandated regional competitions, maybe like they're worth like fewer points, but like they help a competitor like stair step their way up to the threshold then like maybe one of the fun storylines is like oh my god this this competitor was like just two points shy of making the threshold but yeah. then like yeah like I don't know, something like, like that 
Yeah, but, yeah, like you can track the progress basically to right, right. Or getting if you to have the big leagues. You can track progress beyond just the competition map. But yeah, just, this is all to say that this is just one way to make it feel like a sport. It doesn't have yeah. any other, like there's no other implication that I'm trying to like set here. Mm -hmm. It's just like one idea. Um, I don't know if you guys want to elaborate on that, but that's just the first thing that pops into my head. Uh, one thing that popped into my head when, it, when you talk about like feeling like a sport is you know the unofficial World Cup where they have like three competitors from each country the competing. Rubik's, the relay. The, the world relay, relay. Yeah. The, I, yeah. I forgot yeah. what it's called. The Rubik's World Relay. World Rubik's Relay. Yeah, I think the word relay is in there nations somewhere. Nations Cup. It's not Nations, nations Cup. Is cup. Is nations Cup. Nations, nations Cup. Nations I think that's cup. that sounds yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Nations or is it Cup. The nations Relay. I don't nations remember. Cup, I believe, because I think we have regional yeah, relays nations in cup. the states. But I believe they used they call right. it Nations Re or Nations Cup at the last uh, WC. Right. Right. No, go ahead, Carrie. Well, okay. Well, so with the Nations Relay or whatever Nations Cup, whatever it is called, I know why it's not like an official thing, and that's because some countries have like vastly more cubers than other other ones. So it's like not fair to pair the United States up against like Switzerland or something. But I feel like sports when i think of like the pinnacle of sports i think of the olympics and the mm -hmm. olympics you know puts a heavy emphasis on like what country are you representing um and, and there's also like a celebration at the end of people like the winners running with their flags as like capes behind their back right i think there's like a, a very grandiose vibe that comes with that whole type of sport and i think like with cubers i, I feel like the country of origin like doesn't matter quite as much because everyone kind of learns online through tutorials mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's not really based on like uh the country's training program or anything but i still think that there's like some sense of camaraderie when like i don't know like let's say there's the german team and there's like the the Vire twins and like all the germans who are watching like get you know like i don't know like th they they feel proud of the Vire twins because it's like i don't know part of the same country yeah no i i 100 agree i think that like, because it creates more of an Olympic feel. And I think that is something... Were you guys in... Manu, I know you weren't. Carrie, did you go to Australia for World Championships? Oh, no. I was gonna, but then it overlapped with VidCon. So I was oh. really close. Really close. <laughs> hey, you gotta set your priorities straight. Um, VidCon's yeah. super important, right? Um, no, but I think for that, they implemented the Nations Cup. And I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they did it in Paris, too. I think Paris is the first time that they uh, did it. I want to say yes. That sounds Be right to me. Because I think it was a Rubik's thing, like ah, ah. they they were using the Rubik's Speed Cube. And do you remember how the Rubik's Speed Cube had like a little like Eiffel Tower logo on it? I vaguely remember uh, this. Anyways, it sounds they you, yeah, they used the Rubik's Speed Cube, and I think that is like awesome. And I could easily see it become official. Exactly how like it would be displayed is interesting, but I could easily see on the WCA website, like um. I don't know how you would call it, Nations Relay. You would call it the event. Let's just call it the Nations Cup. You go to the event list, Nations Cup, and you see first place, like China, United States. And then you add the name of the team, like each person's right, name of the of team. Course. And then you add the, you don't need the individual result. You just add the total. And then it can only be updated every world championship. Yeah. So like, and I think that's a really yeah. good way. Um, I think back in the day, it wasn't nearly as competitive, so it wasn't as interesting. But these days, like there are so many countries that are so competitive, and even if they don't have a shot to win, it's still really nice for the world if it were broadcasted properly, right? To see who represents this country. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a really good way, you know. If, if you're from a smaller country, country, yeah. If you're from a smaller country with not that many people. You might not go out of your way to figure out who else is in your country and this would be a good way to like cement it in people's minds like here's who's representing you right right yeah yeah I think, and like, the other thing for, like poland would be such an interesting team yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah, 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 I yeah, mean, yeah totally the, I, I think per capita like they're one of the top countries yeah yeah i think i mean i think off the top of my head, I mean, there, there, there would be a lot of competitive countries. Like, I can already think of, obviously, United States, China, those are already going to be very competitive. I think Canada is also probably decently competitive. Several European nations would probably be Canada competitive. Canada is very fast. Canada is yeah. super yeah. fast. Yeah, I think Canada, I feel like Canada gets slightly slept on, but I think Canada is really I know, good. Australia, of course. Few, 
sub six averages from I think Canada. I think Canada's if you pick three, I think they're pure sub six. Brennan Lynn. Yeah. Kyle Santucci. Bill Wong. Does he have a sub six? He might not even six? be the top three anymore. I mean, it might I don't be know. worth it. To, I mean, it might be worth it to check, you know? Like, here, I'll check for you guys right now who's top See, three. See, we, we should have we known this from doing the... When we were oh, doing yeah. top 100 cubers from last week. Oh, oh yeah. Like, we, like, we like, I know Bill, Wayne, Bill Wayne got a 592, so he's actually okay. first. And the, four, the person oh, okay. I forgot about, Morgan Ye, which, uh, I, like, he competed in um, North American Championships and was very, very fast. So, like, yeah, I guess this is, like, another way to make teams feel... It's another way to make yeah. cubing feel like a sport. I 100% agree. Yeah, yeah. Putting, yeah, putting like, the nation aspect into it, definitely. I think it builds, like, a sense of, like, uh, you guys were mentioning, like, the nationalism, com the camaraderie, the storylines again, right? Because it's something, mm -hmm. especially if it's something that happens every two years, you can see people, like, kind of, like, jockey for position in, like, the national team, if you will. And Yeah. Okay, well, and you can also say things like, oh, Argentina hasn't like made it to like the semifinals yeah. since like 1963 or something like that yeah because yeah yeah with a country you have that long history that you can go back on yeah 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 so yeah I, yeah i guess makes a lot of sense these are all like um things that we could try to do to make it seem more like a sport um yeah like i i, I guess since we, like we already sort of answered the question itself is it cubing a sport and then we concluded it was no so like here's our ways to change it into a yes i suppose mm -hmm. yep yep and then here here's another topic which i want to talk about because i think it's important so like do we want to turn cubing into a sport i think the three of us are kind of like yes but i think it's also interesting to talk about why it may not be such a good thing and i think one thing that comes to my mind is cubing has to be one of the most like wholesome competitive like sport hobby um like yeah know, like what i don't I'm, i literally don't know what words i'm saying but it has to be like one of the most welcoming hobbies um out there right because you can just show up and you know you if you want you can only compete against you can compete against yourself and that's 100 percent okay like i think all three of us and most cubers would be totally down for like new people to come in and just like you know just try it out and like have a good time right but i think when things progress more towards the sport section then it starts to get a little bit more cutthroaty and gatekeeping that i think that stuff would be good to avoid since i really like 100%. how welcoming everything is right yeah. and if 100%. we get to the point where where like that that's i feel like one issue of creating like these like tiers of cubers having having like cutoffs for who like makes it into um some invitational or a nation's team then it gets like then we're like jockeying for position that there's toxicity that can come out of that i feel like that's like something to avoid so do you guys have any thoughts on like how we could avoid those or like you know other other complications that might come with um cubing becoming a sport or more sport like yeah i i could definitely see that like if if someone ends up in like some semi-finals of like a relatively big competition but they clearly like don't deserve it for whatever reason then like people could start feeling like, oh, th that person doesn't deserve to be there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess what I was going to say is that I think one thing that's really great about cubing is that there's almost zero barrier to entry. It's sort of like, you can just show up to a competition. I guess you do have to register beforehand. But I think like for every more official sport, you probably have to be within some system. Like you have to have like a right. coach and like a, 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 like a registered team. Or like a, like a, a school AAU, that's affiliated with it. Junior varsity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, guys yeah. probably know the terminology better. Chess club. <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah, totally, totally. Like, I think we're trying to avoid that, right? And I, I think, you know, having these qualifications for, like, the big competitions is unavoidable just because of how, how many people show up. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I think at the local level, it feels nice that, you know a six-year-old who's only been cubing for like a week can show up and that probably we don't want to change at least at the lowest level see this is this is i i 100 agree so i have two things if you're listening to this podcast call to action be nice <laughs> yeah Look, it sounds super easy I don't think yeah. people are nice enough sometimes, right? It sounds super easy. And this is, we talked about this in a previous podcast episode, I think privacy within the WCA, mm. just about 
the expanding growth of the WCA and the Cuban community and how we don't want the community to mirror something like Super Smash Brothers. Right. Oh right. yeah. Right. So, or we don't want to mim that community to mimic something similar to that. Now, obviously, you know, there's there's an amount that you can control, right? There, there's an amount that you can control and there's an amount that's uncontrollable. But the first thing that we can all do as a community is to just be nice. <laughs> like at the end of the day, respect, be respectful and all that. Um, but I think um, if you ask, I think some people about what are the fundamental flaws of the WCA, you might hear some people respond that we have one universal experience for mm. a competitor. So I'm not saying we should implement divisions, but for speed stacks, for speed stacking, they have age divisions, right? Mm. And the reason why you implement age divisions is that you have different experiences for different competitors. The problem with that is that it might create this like weird ladder and weird like barrier to entry that you're referring to, Carrie. Like, honestly, if you're faster than all these guys, you should be in whatever, you know, division you want to be, right? Um, we don't want to have that segmentation of the community, right? That's the that's the really important mm -hmm. part and the fundamental value of the WCA. Yeah. But the fundamental problem is that universal experience too. So that's why I think the leaderboard is a really great idea because I think that the experience can be the same, but if you want it to be different, it can be. Right, different. right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I guess it's like... Uh... It, it's like DLC, right? Like it, it does not change like the base, the base experience. I'm it's sorry, like DLC. Okay, I, I'm like. like I think it's a good analogy. Chronic gamer. The board is downloadable content. Cro oh chronic gamer moment. Well, all right. dude, oh. Maybe it's not downloadable, but it's more like, um, like the. Dude. I'm trying to think of a better analogy. I was gonna say like the icing on the cake, but it's that's not patch. quite right. It's a patch. Dude, it's that's, a patch. Dude, that's something. literally a paywall. That's what we okay. do want. No, 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 no. Free, free DLC. No, 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 no. Oh, dude. Free so, DLC. Sometimes it's free DLC, right? Um, okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I think I think it's called like free DLC, right? It doesn't change your base experience, right? And if you and there's like this extra option for those who want to like take it a little bit further, who want to want to like I don't want to say get more out of their cubing experience, but they they just, they're just looking for something else, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a world where both of them could coexist, and I think that will help definitely. Um, keep the toxicity out of it because i think one one good way one decent way i think to be toxicity is just be like just remind yourself hey this is a game right or like you know it, it's, it's just yeah. a hobby we're doing this for fun but i think when it turns into like more sport and there's more of the, comp the competition um you know the scale it's harder to make that yeah like, yeah yeah there, it's harder to say like this is just a, a game or like a toy right 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 where like you know let's say you're at nation's cup right you're you're like you're you're competing really hard for your country right then it's harder to say like oh you know like it, it's just it's just a silly toy like who who cares like no like like i'm like my, it's for my nation right like my nation's it's yeah for my nation's history in cubing which is which you know people care about so yeah i, I think so. on one hand like we want people to feel proud when like they did good for their nation it's like uh they want to feel like responsible for their nation's victory but on, on the other hand like I feel like all of this is also adding pressure because if a cuber like messes up and fumbles on PLL, we don't want everyone to be like, True. oh my god, you just let down all of Canada and like because this is like a serious sport, like you should feel bad about that. I mean, right. no one says that even in real sports, but I'm sure like that those feelings exist like in the Olympics, you know. Um, so I, I guarantee you people have this, people have this emotion for players on certain teams when the teams do not do well. As someone who's yeah. like watched cricket for like fifteen years or whatever, this definitely happens. We definitely are like, yeah, this guy was completely useless. And even though like and they're they're an extremely skilled player, right? But we, like, like the, if the we were in their position, we would look laughable. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, this I is think what it's I like... say just be nice. Yeah, just, just be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I guess when it comes to like the question of is cubing a sport. Maybe the answer is that it's irrelevant. It's all about just whether people are having fun. True. Mm -hmm. You know. True. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're all about having fun. I think this whole podcast was talking about like, well, how do we make it like fun? How do we ch how do we make that experience better? You know. Yeah, because some people yeah. will, some people will only it'll, it'll be a positive experience for them if 
um, if cubing becomes more sport-like, right? So it's just, it's an avenue to explore at the very least. And it's a conversation that cubing has had at least for five years, if not longer. Like I, I remember the CF polls about if cubing is a sport yeah. or not, right? It's so. better to have the conversation than pretend it doesn't exist. True. True. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah. Brutal honesty is the best policy. <laughs> but you know yeah, what? And... You know what's absolutely not a sport? I'm going to start some beef here. Speed stacking. All right. I'm, I'm dropping the mic. That's it. That's the last you guys are going to hear from me. I, I thought you were going to say, you know, it's not a sport this episode because the episode <laughs> yeah, is over. Oh, oh, that's okay. That, that's, not, that's not where I was going. I mean, we should probably wrap up the episode, but no, I, I just wanted to say something. I actually thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to do something real smooth there, but no, but. Oh man, I missed my, now, okay. now I regret it. I had the opportunity. <laughs> this is not a smoothness sport. This is, no. this is just off the cuff banter. You're allowed to mess up. All right. Well, I'm glad to. Okay. Know. I'm glad. Thank you for the uh, non-toxicity. Yes. Yes. We respect you, Manu. All also, right. I'm in, joking in about spirit... the speed stacks thing. So just just to clear the air, I have no beef. With speed oh yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we should make an episode about speed stacks. I honestly feel like I have a lot to say about it. It's in Not... We could make a video yeah. even where it's just like speed cubers tried to do speed stacking, right? Oh yeah. Well, I I'm pretty sure like. A lot of speed cubers have speed stacked. Like I know Max Park got, got really good at it. Okay. Um, but I think more in terms of like the concepts and how it's like interesting that like we still use their merchandise. I think there's like a lot of interesting things to say. So maybe that's an episode idea. Maybe not. Well, I have a lot yeah, to say we'll, on that. We'll, topic, we'll but... have to delve in on that in a future episode. <laughs> yeah, in a future episode. All right. Well, I think this episode of Over Inspected is coming to a close. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Bye-bye, everyone. All right, boys. Peace out. <laughs>